what do you know about this football team that maybe you didn't know a month ago based on the spring game, based on everything else that happened in camp, or there's some things that you feel better about. Maybe you got some concerns that you didn't have five or six weeks ago. You know, I always caution people, Mark, to take the spring game with a grain of salt, because I feel like one of the, you know, one of the things people love to do, of course, because like you said, there's a beauty in the scarcity. And I think that's what makes college football so great. I mean, there, it's the only sport where, you know, we spend months before kickoff ever happens breaking this thing down, dissecting it from position units to offense, defense, special teams, to hanging on every single word that coaches and players say, to giving predictions. I mean, you name it. But, you know, you don't want to take too much away from a spring game because certainly it feels like every year there's some sort of spring game standout or or something that happens that is sort of, sort of more of a one-off. And it, it, it's a glorified scrimmage, right, when you really break it down. As far as what did we learn and what have I learned about this football team the last couple of weeks, or at least navigating through spring ball, I'm not sure there's anything that I didn't at least already figure or assume based on some of the new additions. You know, I felt like coming into the spring that South Carolina had exponentially improved across the board on the offensive side when it came to the skill positions. Obviously, Spencer Rattler is the headline grabber, and it's a massive upgrade with the Gamecocks, the quarterback position. But all across the offense, you know, the running back position, adding Christian Bill Smith, Lavoisier Carroll, the returns of Marshawn Lloyd and Juju McDowell. Then you look at wide receiver, adding Antoine Wells. And that's something I really think one of my biggest takeaways, Mark, from the spring game was – I think Antoine Wells is going to become a household name in the SEC. Him and Josh Van on the outside. Again, if you're not familiar, Wells is a guy that he is an FCS product, played at James Madison, but he was the best wide receiver in FCS last year, a record setter at James Madison. I think he's going to be an absolute beast for South Carolina out there and a great weapon for Rattler to utilize. Obviously, Austin Stodner not on campus yet. And, you know, I think offensively the big question for this team is going to be the offensive line. That's what it's going to come down to. The difference, I think, between a six-win or an eight-win season in 2022 for South Carolina, it's going to come down to can they get any push up front because you return a lot of experience with that unit, but it's experience from a unit that was one of the worst in the SEC last year. Defensively, again, I don't think we've really gotten any answers. Of course, Cam Smith at defensive backs getting a ton of hype. Um, you got a couple of guys up front, and I'm excited about Jordan Strong, Jordan Birch. But nothing you really learn in the spring game, I think, that you draw any conclusions. I think most fans are just banking on, hey, what South Carolina did last year with the limited guys they had, what Clayton White did, Torian Gray. And I think most just assume that's going to continue and South Carolina will be uh, at least, you know, above average on the defensive side. So, you know, I, I think the biggest takeaway from spring practice and the spring game is that South Carolina should be much improved offensively. And I think when you add a guy like Spencer Rattler in the center, that's assumed. But actually seeing it on the field, getting the opportunity to see number seven, and while they really didn't open up the playbook and go downfield, you could see some of that natural passing ability. You could see some of the things that made Spencer Rattler a five-star prospect and made him such a highly touted player and made him market this time last year People were talking about him being the number one pick in the NFL draft and talking about being a leader on their early Heisman odds for 2021. So, of course, that's got Gamecock fans excited when you add that type of player. As we all know, Mark, it's a quarterback-driven game. It's the most important position in sport. And if you don't have that guy, you don't have a chance. And finally, it feels like for the first time since really the Connor Shaw and Dylan Thompson days, way back when Steve Spurrier was the head coach, the Gamecocks have that guy in their center that could potentially lead them to – uh, exceeding expectations yet again in Shane Beamer's second year. Connor Shaw comes to mind as one of the most <laughs> underrated seasons I can remember in recent times. 24 touchdowns, one pick, one particular, one of those 11-2 and two seasons. And, and nobody really recognized him as a top-level quarterback, but he got the job done. No question about that. 